Today on America's Court with Judge Ross. The two of you went on a road trip. That's correct. And you feel as though you came up short $500. Oh, definitely. All right. And Mr. McMillan feels as though he more than paid for the trip. Absolutely. In my courtroom, it's about equity and fairness. You want him to pay six twenty-eight. dollars Yes, Your Honor. All right. Knock my socks off. Justice should be more than just some foreign concept. I actually want you to learn something. The law talks about something may in fact be true, but can they prove it? And that's what's tough. Fair, firm, compassionate. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. Blogger Marcus Hayes thought he'd have help paying for his cross-country road trip until the defendant backed out. Mr. Hayes is suing Edward McMillan in the amount of $500. Mr. McMillan claims because they arrived late to their destination, he missed out on a job opportunity, leaving him with no money. All rise. Remain standing and come to order. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Kevin Ross presiding. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. All parties have sworn, Your Honor. Third, your deputy Thomas. The two of you went on a road trip. That's correct. And you feel as though you came up short $500. Oh, definitely. All right. And Mr. McMillan feels as though he more than paid for the trip. Absolutely. All right. Why do we have this difference of opinion? What was the understanding? Well, the understanding was that, you know, we, we guessed that the trip was going to cost about $1,500. And I paid 1000 of it. And he did not even pay 500 of it. So he didn't pay half of Let it. Let me make sure that we're all on the same page. $1,500 was the expected cost for no, the trip. The no, guess. No. A thousand. Oh, well, see, now we, we, we starting off wrong. A thousand to 1,500. You gave me like a Now, wait a minute. Array. Your recollection was that it was somewhere between 8,000 and 1,500. Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right. So that still counts. It's somewhere in between the range. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if, if it were, no, I'm thinking it was only $500, we would have a problem. But if he says, I'm thinking 1500 and you're thinking between 1000 and 1500 we're good. Well, if he's telling you and you're participating in the trip, then the inference is that you should be aware that this is the cost that we're going to incur. Right, and I was aware. Right, so if that's the case, <laughs> then you knew that somewhere between 500 and $750, you were going to have to pay money. If we were splitting the trip down the middle, which we weren't, I offered that, and then he said, then no, 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 it's totally to fine. Me now that that was not the understanding of the two of you, that it was not going to be split. Correct, Your Honor. What was your understanding? My understanding was that he said, you know what, I know that you're pressed for cash, so just chip in where you can, chip in for some gas, chip in for the tolls, chip in for some food, and then we'll call it even, because most of the trip was being... He but, tells you, this trip's going to cost somewhere between $1,000 and $1,500. Chip in where you can. That's your honor. Got it. That's not true. That is, I believe That you. is true, Mark. That's not true. That didn't happen. He didn't uphold any part of his bargain. You know, he what was, was the first thing that he said he was going to do that he didn't uphold? Well, so he didn't drive like the amount that I did. He didn't he, drive. He probably, this is a trip from where, from point A to point B? Which it was from San Francisco SF? to New York. No. All right, so we're agreeing on the locations. Okay. Yes. All right. That's no debating that. Drive. No debating that. And I don't care how much people like each other, that's a long time to be in the car with somebody. It mm -hmm. is. Okay. We're going from the West Coast to the East Coast. And what was the expected number of days? Well, we said, I mean... What was it, the we, goal? We, we said you... try to four and five, and then I said, you know what, let's give ourselves a cushion and make it seven to nine. All right. right. You thought between four and five days you would get from San Francisco to New York. He thought that. And you said you agreed that. Well, I said if we weren't, if we were like like speeding and like not stopping, <laughs> like being like zombies driving 24, 24 seven. But no, right. I mean, to stop... Was there a conversation about four to five days versus seven to nine days? No. There was a conversation... How long did you think it was going to take? I thought it was going to take either between five and, like, eight days. Because we did talk about that cushion. But that's not... But, Your Honor, that's not the, that's not the problem. The problem is it took 12 days. You don't even know why I'm reacting to what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> he says... He wanted to do it between four and five days, and I said between seven and nine. And you were like, no, no, that's not what I No, I did and not say that. And then I said to you, well, what did you think it was? Between five and eight days. <laughs> I, I was not, not that the seven to, that was not about the 
to deny. <laughs> that was about the fact that the actual trip took 12 days, took longer than even the cushion. We're not even at the 12. I'm well, talking about before when you're still in the Bay Area, when you're still looking <laughs> at the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah. We haven't even got to the Brooklyn Bridge, okay? I'm like, when you're at that bridge, the conversation was somewhere between four and nine days. Yes, you're right. It ultimately <laughs> took how long? 12 days. It took 12 days. If it took 12 days, that's more cost. Yes. Because mm -hmm. are you guys staying somewhere? Yeah, right. we were staying at a hotel. So, yeah. right. so the cost, I paid for. you paid for these things. I paid for four of them. I, I think he paid, paid for one. But mine was much fancier than his. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are killing me. All right. You're fancy, huh? All right. It was. And one of the deal breakers was that he didn't drive the amount of time he was supposed to. Right. He only drove he, 300 of the 3,000. 300 like barely I, gets you out of California. I feel like exactly. I drove more than that. You Your feel Honor. like you drove more well, than it that. The trip was in March, so he really actually doesn't even know. No, I think did he, he was, drive the bulk of the duration of the trip? Uh, possibly, yeah. Possibly. I DJ'd, though. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on America's Court. You gave me an itemized cover sheet here. Yes. <laughs> I'm very thorough. Oh, uh, that's funny. I want my money. Uh. <laughs> and later. Then what he's saying is consistent with what you found, which was your vaping device in the car. Possibly, Your Honor. Well, not. However. Was the vaping device there or not? Closed captioning provided by. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. America's Court is back with the case of blogger Marcus Hayes, who is suing Edward McMillan for $500. What's the $500 for? Um, so it's for the expenses of gas, the lodging. Um, you have proof of that? The food. Yeah. Oh, I'd like here. to see that, please. There you Anything go. Else? Did you contribute to gas oh, and lodging? Yeah. Mr. McMillan. I did. How much did you contribute? You have, oh my gosh, you got serious receipts here. I also have Very receipts, thorough. Your Honor, okay. of the things that. that I bought. And you, you gave me an itemized cover sheet here. Yes. <laughs> I'm very thorough. Oh, uh, that's funny. I want my money. Uh. <laughs> and these are the dates. This, you said it was in March. I see the gas prices. Okay, a lot of, yeah, lots of gas. Okay. This is the motel. Is this the same motel? No, this is, this is the second motel. This is the third motel. This is the fourth. Okay. And what do you have, sir? Oh, you said I'm, he, he, he's going to be prepared. I'm going to be prepared as well. <laughs> I see some gas receipts. Yeah. I see one hotel. I see Fancy more one. gas receipts. This is oh, you had to pay some tolls. Now we're in Chicago. I mean, I'm charting the whole trip here. Okay, I can tell. I got it. He paid some money. How much would you say he paid? Maybe two hundred fifty. Okay. How much I, you, would you say you paid? I would say I paid at least like four hundred. Okay. All right. I get it. Anything else? <laughs> I mean, I don't think I should have to pay any of the money. Because I other paid... Than, other than the 400 you spent? Other than the 400 I spent because I spent money days. on it. it, it took because it took 12 days. days my understanding... And over 12 days driving from San Francisco to New York and several hotels and gas, you're thinking that $400, you're good. I do think so, Your I Honor. It. Because... Based on the evidence and the testimony before this court, I don't. <laughs> and the gavel will come down in favor of the plaintiff. Now, the Thank issue you, at this point is just the matter of the cost. Because I don't understand why $500. Um, because you've given me all the receipts mm -hmm. for the cost you incurred. What I don't have is why $500? Why not $1,000? Why not $1? Why $500? I Let's thought I was being fair and I was being generous with the 500 because I spent a lot of money. I could have really asked for 1000 You didn't spend any of your, okay, well, here's, your own money. Here's where we are. You estimated it would be somewhere between 1000 and 1500 mm -hmm. That was your estimate. Uh, so I'm going to go on the high end of that, which would mean 750 for each of you. Well, the difference between 750 and 400 is 
That's going to be your judgment. Okay, I'm happy the order. with that. Case Thank you. Judge Ross has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $350. I'm happy with the outcome of the case. My friend knows that he shortchanged me with the road trip, and I'm just glad that the judge saw that he was wrong. I'm not happy about having to pay more money for this trip, but you know, if that's what it takes to move on for this friendship, then so be it. And coming up on America's Court with Judge Ross. Go, I've never had any. He is the person taking my mail, and your position is. I'm not taking the mail. I don't know what he's saying. And your about. stuff is not coming up missing at all, ever. Closed captioning provided by. When I have a breakout from eczema, I feel like I'm in this shell. Gold Bond Eczema Relief relieves five frustrating symptoms of eczema. My skin's back. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. Johnny Hendon claims his neighbor intentionally broke his car window after saying the car was on fire. Mr. Hendon is suing Joseph Miner in the amount of $270.60. Mr. Miner claims he was just trying to save the plaintiff's car and says Mr. Herndon should be thanking him. Let's talk about this fire. Yes, Your Honor. Well, Joy and I live in the same duplex. Yes. I've lived there for three years. Um, I've never had a problem with anybody um, until he showed up. How long have you been living there, Mr. Miner? About a year and a half, sir. And what made you decide to move into to this particular complex? Um, I was, uh, my, my lease was up at my old place, and I was looking for a cheaper rent. Right. And uh, it was a good little spot. Not the best neighborhood, but it was, uh, it's not bad. It did the job? Yes, sir. What was your issue with Mr. Hendon? If um, any? Well, the, the day I moved in, I was uh, standing in the front yard, yes. taking in the, the environment, mm -hmm. checking everything out. He pulled in the yard and jumped out of his car like he's RoboCop, ran over to me, you know, wondering who I was, why I was there. Do you recall the first time you met him, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Do you recall uh, the way that you approached him? Yes, Your Honor. It was... Tell me how did you approach him. It was a lot more welcoming. All right, this relationship is going over a period of time. Yes, yes sir. Your Honor. And we're not having any problems? I would say, hey, you know, sometimes he would say hello back, sometimes he wouldn't, kind of just a real... He was inconsistent yes, with his... Yes, Your Honor. And then what happened? So everything, you know, is, is, that's just the situation for a, a period of time. And so one time he just... How long of a time are we talking? A month. All right. A month and First a half. 30 days, no problems. That's right. From day 31 on, what happens? So apparently he is missing some mail. Well, okay. Okay. Well, his well, mail ends up missing. That, that, are you that's missing correct. mail? Yes, I am uh, I had ordered a package. Uh, Are you missing mail? Yes. Uh, I don't uh, need to know what the mail is. And I take it missing the mail is something that you were looking for and you weren't happy with that. Yeah, it's something I was, I was waiting on. It's, what uh, does it have livelihood. to do with Mr. Hendon? Um, when I called the, the company that I ordered the stuff from, they said that it was delivered. All right. Um, the problem is uh, my duplex is a half a number above his address. So it could Meaning have... if you're 111... You're one, one, one and a and half, a half, something yes, like sir. that? Okay, I get so, it. So, so it would be easy for anyone delivering mail to assume that if I go to one, 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 I've accomplished the goal of delivering to one, one, one and a half. I, I believe so, yes, sir. Ergo, I've never had any... He is the person taking my mail. And your position is, I'm not taking the mail. I don't know what he's saying. And your about. stuff is not coming up missing at all, ever. No. You're not having any problem. No, Your Honor. You don't find that odd? That I you're not having any problems getting your mail, but he keeps telling you, my mail isn't showing up. Are you sure you're not getting it? You don't see any problem with that. I, I could see where the suspicion would come in. Good, because like, that tells me that you're reasonable, that you're logical. Because for an average person, they would conclude that seems fishy to me. Coming up on America's Court. Joe saw smoke coming from my car one day and decided to break the window to get into it. So... Hmm? Uh, that doesn't make sense. I would like my window fixed. Closed captioning provided by. Seem to get it wrong. Y'all at the wrong hotel. Ritz down the street. The Ritz ain't got you behind the camera. It's a nice joint, man. Turn that radio up. <laughs> Why'd you put these outside right now? What happened at the motel? Detroit.
It's rated R. Now playing in select theaters. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. America's Court is back with the case of Johnny Hendon, who is suing Joseph Minor for property damage. And you were getting annoyed that this was, yeah, was yes, just a one-time thing? This is a one-time thing. It's a, and it's a package. Also, this wasn't something that was just going on and on. Like every week, you're no, not sir. getting mad. This, this, this was, was this one-time one package. Thing. Yes. And this one package, you didn't get it. And I don't need to know why you didn't get I mean, what the contents of the package. You just were up in arms because you didn't get it. Correct. All right. And you just concluded it was him. Yes, sir. And that created bad blood. All right. Why are we here? So basically, Your Honor, after this whole mail situation, uh, Joe saw smoke coming from my car one day and decided to break the window to get into it. So hmm? uh, that doesn't make sense. I would like my window fixed, Your Honor. You so, had smoke coming out of your car. Was there a fire inside of your car? There, Apparently, there, there was, Your Honor. You saw a fire inside yeah. of his I car. I didn't see a no, fire. I saw smoke. Did you go and try to contact him? I did. I saw the smoke in the, in the car. I looked in the window, and it was... Is Enough the that property I couldn't management see. company on site? No. Not that no. Anymore. No. No. No, sir. And you didn't think to call 911 or no, anything I, like that? I, I, I ran up to his door and I, I beat on his door and I got no, no response. And you thought someone may be inside of the smoking. I, I had no idea what was going now, on. Now, are I just we saw... talking smoke as in fire or smoke as in one of those situations? You know, I, honestly, Your Honor, I don't know. I just saw a lot of smoke. It's, okay. There could have been a fire in there. Well, because. If it's a lot of smoke, then that would suggest something urgent and dangerous. Yes, sir. And that's so I ran back to my apartment and I got a, my fire extinguisher and I broke the window and I proceeded to extinguish what I, the fire that I thought was there. Judge Ross's verdict when America's Court returns. You're watching America's Court with Judge Ross. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. Did you see your interior of your car at some point? Yes, Your Honor. Was there some fire no. damage? No, Your Honor. What caused the smoke? It was a, smo a, a vape pen that I had left in my car. Then what he's saying is consistent with what you found, which was your vaping device in the car. Possibly, Your Honor. But not, however. Was the vaping device there or not? Yes, yes, it okay. was. Okay, then it's not possibly. Because what I'm trying to understand is, is he, you know, just blowing smoke, pardon the pun. Oh, I see. Or is, was there a legitimate reason why he broke your glass? Your Honor, because you're saying at this windows. point, fix my glass. Yes, Your Honor. And you're saying, why should I fix your glass? I made sure your car wasn't damaged. He, he, he should be giving me a thank you instead of uh, a bill. You have proof of the damage? Yes, Your Honor. Show me. And you're not denying that you damaged his property. No, sir. I, 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 I was helping him out. All right. Is this the vehicle? Yes, Your Honor, the white. Uh, it's nice. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you just want your car back to the condition that it was in prior to Mr. Uh, Minor. Yes, Your Honor. Causing the damage. I get it. Based on the evidence and testimony before this court, the gavel will come down in favor of the plaintiff. He damaged his property. And sometimes no good deed goes unpunished. And because of the history that the two of you had, now, what do I think about that? package it really doesn't matter at this point because nobody knows what happened to it but you will pay him that amount of money that is the order case closed judge ross has ruled in favor of the plaintiff the defendant has been ordered to pay 270 dollars 60 cents i'm glad the judge ruled in my favor joe broke my window so he's got to pay for the damages case closed i tried to put the fire out in johnny's car and i'm the one that got burned today next time i'll be a little more cautious when i help somebody out Follow America's Court on Facebook and Twitter. This has been a production.